Well, I've been asked to share a little bit about centering prayer. And, you know, when I started doing this years ago with Sister Catherine, it was the simplest of things. Uh, we started with the Lord's Prayer. We were, sat in silence for 20 minutes. I think we ended with the, um, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end, amen. Which I've forgotten what to call that. But anyway, it seemed very simple. It, it took a long time before I read the guidelines and I realized, well, the first guideline is so simple, it's get comfortable. It's because this is not supposed to be painful. This is supposed to be a quiet time with God. So get comfortable. So the second guideline was the one that uh, eluded me, the meaning of it eluded me for many years. The second guideline is you pick a sacred word like love, peace, bless, hope. And the word isn't sacred because of the meaning of the word. The word is sacred because it is a symbol of our intention to consent to the presence and action of God's indwelling spirit within us. I don't know, that, that I guess I must have heard them say that, I, I must have, you know, but I, I don't remember, I don't remember that. And when I realized that, it was like, oh my gosh, is that what I'm doing? What did I think I was doing before? I thought I was just sitting in prayer, only instead of sitting, in prayer talking, I was sitting in prayer without words, silently, which is hard for chatty people. Uh, the idea that this wasn't about my asking God for anything. This was about God, about my, my accepting, consenting, consenting as if God was just waiting, just waiting for me to consent to the indwelling spirit and action of his presence within me. That just turns everything right side up. God is, I mean, I mean, you know, you think to yourself, God is sitting around waiting for me to consent to God's presence and action within me? Well, yes, that's kind of what it is. And when you realize that, you think, well, well, well how come I'm not doing this faithfully? How come I'm not doing it at least twice a day, and how come I'm only doing it for 20 minutes? I have realized that some years ago, and I still have a hard time getting myself to do it twice a day. But I'm doing much better at getting to do it once a day. And I suppose if you aim for a higher standard, it makes it a little easier to get to the lower standard. So that's to be said for that. So, so then, uh, that's the biggie. That was the biggie for me, that this is an incredible, God wants to be active and present within me. Doing Now, the, the problem for me was my conscious mind. You know, because when God does come in, in the centering, my conscious mind doesn't have a clue what God is doing. And I got to tell you, my conscious mind is what's running my day. And my conscious mind thought, why would I want to give 20 minutes to God to do something that I don't know what God is doing? You know, God might be wanting me to give all my money away, become home. I mean, you know, I mean, we do worry about these. Well, some of us worry about these things. Anyway, uh, my conscious mind was a problem for me because my conscious mind, as I said, is the one that decides what I'm going to do every day. <sighs> but my conscious mind was thrown a little bone uh, because I suspect that God knew that my conscious, I needed, I needed the cooperation of my conscious mind. So what I do every time I finish centering is I, I get my little phone where I've been timing myself on the, ins, ins, um, I forget what it is, 
insight timer. That's what it is. I'm timing myself on the insight timer. And afterwards, it gives you a little opportunity to journal. So I get, my conscious mind gets to journal and say whatever she wants, which may or may not have anything to do with what God and my unconscious mind were doing. But it's a bit of a bone thrown to her. And since that, since we've been doing that, since my conscious mind has been given a little treat after centering, she's been much, much better about helping me make time for her. So uh, the next thing I wanted to, to kind of encourage you about is that uh, the idea is that you sit tranquilly and ideas come and you let them go and more ideas come and you let them go. And it all sounds so peaceful and serene. And sometimes it is. Sometimes my mind is very calm and obliging. But I must confess, although I mean it as kind of an encouragement, sometimes I sit down to center and I, I, I hardly have time to get my sacred word out before my thoughts come at me like a stampede of buffaloes. Whoosh! And, and, and the bell rings and I'm, I'm, I'm all done and I think, did, did I? Was that centering? Did I? What was that? What happened? <sighs> well, that's the way it is sometimes. And at first I would think, oh my gosh, can't you, can't you get better at this? I mean, look at, the, I, you're working at it for some time now. Can't you get a little better? And I would judge myself. Mm. Well, <laughs> I, it sounds silly to say it, but I finally realized, Margie, you are not capable of judging yourself. Really? I can't tell when a herd of buffaloes is not a good centering? No, you can't. <sighs> I think that, and I think, I think that's actually the truth. I'm not capable of judging. My job is to give God the time and the intention. That's my job. I, I've got it's a, it's a matter of fact. I, I think I think of it as owing God 20 minutes twice a day. No, it's giving myself a gift of God's action and presence within me for 20 minutes twice a day. It's I got it backwards. I'm not doing God a favor. God somehow so loves each and one of, every one of us that God is waiting for me to consent. It's just bizarre. It's just bizarre. How could I have things so upside down and backwards? So the, f the first thing is just to understand what's being offered to us in Centering Prayer. The gift of God's indwelling spirit acting in us. That's the first thing. The second thing is to realize that we have no capacity to judge what God's doing or not doing in that those 20 minutes. You know, God does not need 20 whole minutes. I'm sure God could even, you know, but God is very polite, very gracious, and waits for our consent. So, um, so the important thing, really, about centering prayer is to understand that we don't understand. To understand that this is not so much a gift, our gift to God is God's gift to us, and to accept it humbly, knowing that we don't know what's going on inside of us. That was very, that is very, still, it's still very hard for me. I keep thinking, so what would be the problem with just letting me know what you're doing? Just a little hint, a peek. Now, <laughs> I don't know, every once in a while, I finish, or during the time I get, oh, I should do X, and it's clear, and I, but mostly, no. So, <laughs> so this is meant to be encouraging. I don't know, is this encouraging or not? But the idea is that centering prayer, doing it once a day is sustenance. It'll sustain us. It's only when we move into doing it twice a day that we begin to allow God to transform us. So this is just my, my attempt to say, do give it a try and do keep on faithfully, knowing that we're humans and we fail, or at least we can't tell if we're succeeding or not, 
but that God really wants our consent to his presence, her presence, God's presence, and action within us. Amen.